Friday Q&A. That means um, <laughs> today is the day where I exclusively make my brain pay attention to your questions in the live comment section. <laughs> but first, tea and waiting for everybody to show up. Let me make sure that the live chat is on. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to have to move this table a little bit closer. Forgive me, I've got a whole new setup. Right? Same room, stick on wallpaper. <laughs> um, and a new shelf. So let me, let me move this forward just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. That way I can <clears throat> see everybody's comments without having to completely lean down and read everything. Okay, but first, T. We always wait. For people to roll in and um, today I'm gonna do I got this sample flavor of white tea infused with jasmine so white jasmine from um, me leaf mei leaf tea um I got a sample size because jasmines can be tricky they're either really tasty or they're really gross so let's hope it's really tasty cuz I don't have any backup plans if it's gross morning everybody everybody's rolling in now um, this morning, for those who are just showing up, I am going to try this white jasmine infused tea. You have to be careful when you're getting jasmine tea, especially in the U.S. because a lot of places just spray their tea with jasmine essential oil. So I was excited when they talked about they were actually um, infusing jasmine blooms with their white tea. It looks like a second picking white tea. I didn't expect it to be silver needle or anything, but we're going to go. We're going to go gentle here and not do a whole lot. The leaves are nice and fuzzy. I like that. That means quality. Sometimes if you get really high quality tea and you open up the bag, it will look like mold has grown on the sides because it's like completely white fuzzy, but that's actually little tea hairs falling off and it's a sign of very high quality tea. So, um, so I'm not going to do a whole lot because I don't, I don't want to overdo it with the jasmine, right? <clears throat> And then this is like 180 degree water. All right. I mean, I may or may not have been able to put more in that, but a little goes a long way with Jasmine, so I'm not trying to overdo it. Um, so we're going to wait until, um, we're going to wait until uh, I'm done brewing this tea. That way, uh, it gives people a chance to roll in before we start the Q&A. Um, I would like to bask in the different background. <laughs> it. I was like, yesterday I was supposed to do gardening stuff, right? And it was raining, like, literally sideways all day. And I was like, alright, so let's just change the office like you had planned to this weekend instead now this is peel and stick wallpaper and it went up okay it did fine but this fucking shelf <laughs> this thing and i'm a very visual spatial person like i can follow directions without even reading them by just looking at pictures i don't have a problem with like the no word picture directions right and it just it was so tedious it took me like a good solid hour to put this first shelf up and then I called my husband for help and we got this one done in like 30 minutes and then it took me <laughs> right and then the center shelves were even harder and then I'm like oh my god and so I am um, it's a nice shelf don't get me wrong it was just like I was like oh I'm gonna put this together in no time <laughs> and then the universe laughed and suddenly it was seven o'clock at night and I was like dinner Right, um, that kind of situation, you know, but I, I wanted something to where, like, I could have, and I'm going to get a different chair. I had actually planned on sitting on the ground with you, and I, I had got this really cool tea table, and it, like, folds up to be put away, but they didn't think about if you try to move the table at all, it collapses on you and I was like nope nope and so I might figure out I think I want to use it for my outside tea times um I think that might be because I have more room to function this is a really tiny room and I have a greenhouse that I built in here it's like one of those like plastic Amazon specials so it'll come down eventually but right now I have like this space is all I have. Um, and it was just really easy to hit the table and knock it down. Um, so, um, but anyhow, um, I, uh, oh, how many extra pieces did I have left over was a question. 
there was like a solid six things left over but i think they're extras because it was all like the screws that go in and like i tightened it you only work with this little tiny allen wrench to put the whole thing together so i didn't miss any holes um but yeah um so i i got that partially done but i'm gonna get a smaller chair so like we can end up like like so i have like a bunch of teas on the shelf here books things you know i made sure to have my books here because i'm always like oh yeah i write books i don't have one to show you but i do i <laughs> just don't have them near me in the live you know um so let's see how she turned out Ooh, i certainly smell the jasmine it described it as um Scented with jasmine flowers, floral sweet with star fruit and apple. I smell the apple. I really do. This is a very light, very light brew, but they opened up a little bit. I didn't put a whole lot in there though, because, oh my god, I just realized that I don't have my teacups. <laughs> oh my gosh, I felt so prepared. Give me a second. That's so hilarious. Do you ever feel so confident that you're ready for something? You're like, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like the most obvious thing, like get in the car, don't have your keys, like, or just, you know, making tea, forgot a teacup. Uh, oh my God. Okay, so it's a pretty nice, like, very pale soup, but um, I didn't put a whole lot in there because I'm not trying to have to drink something I don't like through all of tea time. <laughs> Ooh, that is nice. Oh, I instantly know, I instantly see what they say by apple. But like, if you were somehow able to taste like the flavor of the apple bloom, like before the apple becomes an apple. That is really, really, really nice. Okay. So, let's jump into Friday Tea Time Q&A, and look, now I can easily flip my timer. <laughs> um, not that I maybe won't pay attention to it, but who knows. I thought about when I was going to be on the ground, I'd have it, like, on the ground with me, like, in front of my face. <laughs> that way, I'm like, you have to pay attention to it. Um, um, okay. If you have a question, say QUESTION in all caps. For the people in the live, you don't have to scream at me in the comment section for future people. Say QUESTION in all caps and then put your question after it. Okay, question. What's your opinion of freeze drying herbs? I have a... They're scrolling fast. I have a freeze dryer so the money has already been spent. Um, I wouldn't do it. The misconception about freeze drying... That was curling perfect. I don't know why I destroyed it. Um... The misconception about freeze drying is that it just uses cold temperatures, but I used to have one and then I sold it and I was just like, I can't for the amount of space and energy and everything and time it takes for the small amount. Um, you know how it goes like cold and then it gets really hot and then cold and then it gets really hot. It's still using heat. It's still using heat and I would not, I would not freeze dry herbs that I wanted to use in like a medicinal way that, you know, you could freeze dry like your cooking herbs and things that you you know, there are some medicinal properties in there that you'll lose, but you know, for cooking herbs, that's fine. But if you were wanting to make like, I don't know, tea or things like that, I would check out my how to cure herbs video. I've got two of them actually here um, on my wall. It just, you just need like a little like enclosed area and a dehumidifier and it's just like bam and then you're not using heat um you're just pulling out the moisture versus waiting for it to evaporate off it makes very vibrant herbs um that hold on to their medicinal properties for a long time and if you are wanting to make fresh tinctures in the winter time freeze the herbs like in your deep freezer right you got a year to use them up but like it's a fantastic way to extend your harvest to still use fresh plant matter and as a bonus i noticed that my tinctures are done you know a week or so early because when you freeze fresh plant matter it busts open the cellular structure think of it like a 
like a soda can or a pop can, whatever you call it, put in the freezer, how it explodes because it expands. The same thing is happening inside of the plant on a cellular level. So it's even a bonus that way. Um, question, is white vervain used the same as blue Brazilian, blue vervain? It is. Um, each of the verveins have a little bit of a different personality, right? So definitely dig into that. Um, I haven't dug super deep into white vervain because we have the blue vervain that grows around here, but I have seen people talk about her being interchangeable. Um, okay, so question. Do you have any recommendations for hair care? I've been using an herbal and vinegar rinses and haven't eliminated shampoo, but I still seem to have a serum imbalance. Um, it's a lot like your skin, where if you're stripping off um, if you're stripping off your serum, your, your oils, your body will like desperately try to put it back, right? Um, so if you have, I don't know, I would look into like all of like the greasy hairstyles, you know, for like the days when people don't wash their hair because if you let it balance out where you stop stripping the oil off, it'll get a little oilier at first, but then it stops being oily. So I say that as a person that has like dreads that drag by like about a foot onto the ground um and i don't use anything on my hair besides hot water and it'll freak people out but i don't have to wash my hair maybe every three to six months i do more in the summertime because of sweat and stuff but in the wintertime not as much and my hair like isn't greasy in the least i don't have any dandruff i don't it's self-regulating your hair wants to self-regulate um so you might just have to um look at how to stop stripping the oil from your hair or you could go the opposite way and start working with like hair oils um to put that natural fat back in your hair but the problem is you almost want to work with tallow more than you would like a normal oil like let's say like almond oil or something like that because tallow is really similar to like we are red meat animals and tallow comes from red meat animal like like cows right and so your body recognizes it and so you might be able to trick your scalp into thinking it has what it needs and you could just do a little bit and work it in in the evening and then you'd probably want to do a lot of brushing with like a horsehair brush something natural fiber um, would help distribute the oils a lot there's a ton of videos on youtube where women take care of their hair like they used to like hundreds of years ago and um those hair care routines are really interesting and the people didn't have greasy hair right okay um question happy friday um i've learned from you that nettle activates the adrenals and can give energy so i wanted to make a cup of nettle tea instead of coffee and google said it makes you drowsy <laughs> no um, it, nettle isn't going to make you drowsy. Now, you might feel a sense of calm over time because of the nutrients you're getting, but typically the first time you drink nettle, I want you to go low and slow because it can make you feel really jittery. There's no stimulants in it. It's just what happens when your body doesn't have the minerals it needs and then you suddenly give it like this power-packed substance that has all these nutrients and minerals in it you can feel jittery as your body processes it so i want you to go slow and then over time you might just feel a sense of calm from drinking it but nettle doesn't make you feel drowsy in the least um um nerve pain is so bad today what can i do besides gabapentin or crampton um you can work on like making a cayenne based salve i actually have that video coming out tomorrow um, and it's, it's so simple, but like cayenne infused oil, um, anything, you can even get some capsaicin gel. Basically, it's just going to overwhelm your nerve endings to the point that it stops sending pain signals, but it's really amazing for neuropathy and nerve pain. Um, question is taking 25 milligrams of Xanax three times a week for sleep dangerous. It gives me three good nights sleep a week. There's a lot to, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> um, you know, you're not really supposed to use it for more than 24 to 48 hours in a row. So it depends if you're using it like three days in a row or every other day. Um, I wouldn't use it as like the fix because obviously your liver isn't happy. Your stress hormones are really high. And so you're just kind of using a pill to mask that right so it you know and i'm not saying that like it, like if it's working for you use it but like 
there is dependency issues. Like you are flooding your brain with GABA and there likely can be withdrawal symptoms, right? When you decide to stop. But I would look into, in the meantime, even while you're using it, learning about how to get more carbohydrates in your body so your liver can store glycogen overnight so you don't wake up at three in the morning or however that works for you. Or if you're having a hard time going to sleep, your cortisol levels are probably through the roof at night, right? So look into things like working on your vagal tone and herbs that lower cortisol like lavender, chamomile, tulsi, things like that. But I mean, it's better than not sleeping, but don't use it as this is just how I sleep three nights a week because that's not the answer, right? Um, I mean, you can use it in the in short term, but just be aware that long term it has real ramifications. Um, question, what do you think about Epsom salt baths or bags for baths that, oh my gosh, brain, um, that have lavender essential oil. Am I hurting yourself? Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, lavender is one of those ones that's super endocrine disruptor, right? So like you're like murder killing your entire endocrine center. It's lavender is full of benzene, not, not real lavender, but remember essential oils, they aren't the plant. It's like hundreds of pounds of plant refined down into their VOC properties. And people are like, you don't know what you're talking about. In fact, because remember, I said I finally put my books near me. I wrote the first ever book that exclusively talks about the dangers of essential oils called Essentially Deadly, The Unspoken Dangers of Essential Oils. Um, and you can go through it by section of like, um, like endocrine disruptors, things like that. Like what's it doing to your nervous system? What's it doing to your hormone system? What's it doing to your gut? What's it doing to your skin? Um, and it's all study backed. This isn't just my opinion on a couple hundred pages like I'm breaking down real scientific studies that haven't been funded by the multi-billion dollar corporation that is essential oils because fun fact people are always like there are so many studies do you know who pays for those studies doTERRA and Young Living they lead the market and like almost all studies that say essential oils are amazing have been backed by multi-billion dollar companies <laughs> and so I'm not saying there's you know, nothing to them. They are being studied to be, you know, pharmaceuticals to do things like repress your immune system, right? So they definitely do something. But I'm saying that, like, I worked really hard um, to put together, like, how they're, what they do to your body, how they're actually made to help you understand what these are. Because there's, like, 1,200 plus chemicals. Each bottle is typically comprised of 200 different VOCs. And the brand doesn't matter. And the variety doesn't matter. And how it's made doesn't matter. The chemicals are what essential oils are, which is a marketing term, by the way. Anyhow, <laughs> so... If you're interested in like a deep dive into the dangers of essential oils, I would definitely check out that book. Um, question, why does magnesium oil make me itch so bad? Because you're magnesium deficient. So magnesium is really, really amazingly absorbed transdermally through our skin, right? And so <clears throat> what happens is if you are magnesium deficient and you put that on your skin, your body is so desperate for it that it quickly starts pulling it in. You're literally feeling it absorb through your skin. If you itch and burn after putting magnesium oil, that is a symptom of magnesium deficiency. Um, it can get better over time. You can also slow that down by putting actual oil over top of it because remember, magnesium oil isn't oil. It's actually just water that feels oily because there's so much salt in it right um but if you want to put that on and then if it gets to be too much you could put like some olive oil or something over it and it will slow down the absorption um you will still absorb it it just won't you know burn and itch your skin so much question i have tried herbs for sleep they don't work for me is benadryl safe for sleep um you could you could use benadryl um if i was going to do an antihistamine i like superheptidine um, it's an old school one. It's been around for a very long time. It lowers cortisol levels. Um, it, it increases like all of like your happy hormones, like dopamine. Um, and it, I like it. Um, I've used it on occasion. You do have to get a prescription for it, but it's such an easy prescription to get. I usually use like one of the online places. You know, I'm like, oh, my allergies are acting up. I need superheptidine. And they're like, okay. We like nothing else works for me. Superheptidine. Okay. 
right? And you can take it in really small amounts. Like, they usually come in four milligram pills. You can break it into four and just take a small amount. It will make you sleepy because it lowers your stress hormones. It also can make you a little hungry, but Benadryl does the same thing too. So anybody who's struggling with appetite is fantastic for that. Um, okay, so question, follow-up question with the lavender essential oil Epsom salt. How can I shrink the Bartholone cyst non-scented Epsom salt bath? Um, yeah, you can just get normal Epsom salt from the store, right? Like, it doesn't have to have essential oils on it. Um, I had a Bartholome cyst years ago. Uh, thank you so much for the super, uh, Arena Elmer. Um, and that was fucking chaos. I was up in the mountains. It was just me and my two young kids at the time. And, um, husband was gone fighting fire. And I, it was like, overnight, it was like the size of like an egg, right? Um, and so I literally like crab waddled <laughs> out into the woods and found a bunch of plantain leaf growing and started making compresses, um, until it came to a head and I drained it. It fucking hurt, right? But I really like plantain. Uh, another good thing you could do is, um, comfrey and like make a sitz bath with comfrey, um, comfrey leaf, like a tea that you stick your ass in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can definitely use just Epsom salt. You don't have to use the lavender essential oils, right? Um, how do I use plantain leaf for a wash for seasonal allergies? If you wanted to do that, you would make like uh, an herbal infusion with it. But then I want you to get like an insanely like high micron like nut milk type bag. That way you can strain out all the fine like particulars. I don't want you getting that in your eye right um, um question what magnesium can you use for magnesium capsules you could use magnesium glyph glyphosate i always say it wrong glyph it's not glyphosate it's uh i'm gonna say it wrong my brain just glitched there are tons of magnesiums though so it's hard to say like one catch-all because it depends on what your body is needing like what are your symptoms when it comes to using them internally so I would do research to see what you think would work best for what's happening for you and then you could buy that magnesium bulk and, and capsule it if you want to and a lot of people choose to do that because they want to get away from the nasty fillers but when you buy things in bulk powder um, it tends to not have fillers or flow age lysinate thank you I knew I was close um, thank you for the super Sue Rocker. Um, okay, so question. Any herbal uses for eastern redbud tree blooms? I don't know. I don't, we don't have her around there, but um, if she smells or is sticky feeling, I bet if you looked into it, she's probably got some healing compounds. I fell down a a rabbit hole the other day about figs. Somebody asked me if they could use fig latex the same way that they could use um, like milky oat latex, right? As a nervine and calming. And I looked into it and fig latex isn't calming, but I was like, whoa, fig latex is like killing warts and skin infections and like making go numb topically. <laughs> and I was like, that's really cool. We don't have figs around here either. I think I could get some cold weather ones maybe that could grow here, but um, so there's some random fig information, even though you asked about red bud. <laughs> um, okay. Question, um, raw psoriasis on feet. I have to wrap it in plastic wrap just to walk. Ouch. Um, you could start making like a chamomile, like comfrey type infused oil, right? I really like avocado oil. Um, and then you could also add some tallow to that to really calm it down. But I would start looking into removing the PUFA oils, like the rancid seed oils from your diet. They'll be hiding in all of your food. You know, it's things like grapeseed oil, safflower, sunflower, vegetable oil, canola, all that nasty shit that man is making by pressing and making it rancid. It's probably making your liver very unhappy because when we have psoriasis or eczema, it's definitely a symptom of our internal organs not being happy. And typically it's our liver. And I 
I've seen so many people talk about getting the PUFA oils out of their diet, like resolving their issues with like psoriasis, right? On top of doing that, you could also work with something like roasted dandelion root tea to support your liver function, right? Because it's a natural bitter. And so you just kind of want to, you don't want to fall into the detox. I need to clean my liver. You just need to take away what's making your liver unhappy and start consuming herbs that help your liver function naturally. It'll take care of itself. Um, thank you for the super Rachel Pruitt. She says, hi, April. Can't get rid of dry cough. Keeping me up at nighttime. Been four weeks. Scant mucus that tastes sour. Can or be fungal. It's hard to say what's causing it, but I would consider um, mullein infusion. If you have the capacity to get mullein infusion, mullein capsules, mullein tincture would really probably help. Um, sometimes with a dry cough, it's more like a spasmatic issue. So you could maybe even try to find some like a, like a catnip tincture or uh, even an evening primrose tincture, not the oil. It would be harder to find, but as a tincture, she's amazing for stopping like spasmatic issues in our body. I really like her for that. Um, but also maybe check out, uh, I have a short here where I talk about making like an onion and thyme tea because if there is something lodged down in there, like if it's a, a fungal infection or some latent bacterial infection, I really like that thyme and onion tea for getting that nasty out and calming a cough down. Tons of people really love that recipe. It's been around for a very long time in my family. It's it's easy to make too. You're just basically making an onion and tea, th an onion and thyme broth right, with the full skins of the onion, and then you're adding some honey, right, and so it's kind of just like a savory broth. Um, question, in regards to the magnesium oil, with it being salt, is it suggested you have hypertension? You know, um, it is and isn't a salt. I mean, it is a salt, but it's not quite the same as like a basic sodium, and you need magnesium to help regulate your sodium levels, so they kind of work in tandem. Um, so if your magnesium levels are low, your um, what will happen is that your sodium levels can, and potassium levels can all be out of whack because it's electrolytes, right? They work in balance. Um, definitely talk with your doctor, you know, do a little bit of research. But mag I like magnesium oil topically because your body only takes in what it needs versus um, ingesting it. You're kind of like forcing your body to take everything, right? Um, okay, so... Thank you for the super piper. She says, what do you suggest to help lymphatic function? My right leg is swollen and painful. Thank you for all you do. Um, I really love cleavers as a first place to start for lymphatic function. A cleavers tincture, although I think an infusion would be better in this case. I like to, like this time of year, if you've got no snow on the ground right now, you can probably find cleavers growing in your garden. I've got multiple videos on it. I have a video, I don't think I have a video on a cleavers infusion, but it's basically you would dry your cleavers or you would buy dried cleavers. Um, and then you would basically put one ounce of dried cleavers into a quart jar, which is four cups, pour boiling water over top and let that sit until the next morning. Once it cools down, you can pop it in the fridge morning, strain it, drink a cup a day. It'll start making you pee because she's also, you know, a little bit of a diuretic, but that's directly related to being a lymphatic stimulator. Um, if I worked with cleavers for like a week or so and I didn't get the results that I wanted, I would then probably start working with something like calendula bloom at the same time. Calendula is another lymphatic stimulator, easy to grow in your garden. And then if those two didn't work, you could start very carefully and very safely working with poke root, just like one drop of tincture, one drop of poke root tincture, right? Very, very potent very very potent herb but she is like cleavers and calendulas are like hey lymphatic let's get going this is great and then poke is like i said move <laughs> right and so it really gets the lymphatic system moving but go really low with poke root don't pay attention to anyone who tells you to take big ass doses start with one drop one drop and just work your way from one drop for like a couple weeks and then the two drops go really slow um question can i use turkey tail mushroom powder to make a tincture unfortunately no um 
working with powders and tinctures is just a recipe for frustration because what happens is you'll never get the alcohol back out of your tincture right you just won't it'll swell up and it'll soak it all up and even if you happen to have a hydraulic press to press the you'll just never get all your fluid back um, if i had turkey tail powder i would turn it into capsules that would be the best way to use it um question what do you think about yerba mate i got host defense powder with ginseng lion's mane and yerba mate i think it's uh I lost the question. Uh, I think it's, well, totally lost. Oh, I think it's clearing my guts out. That's a pretty strong blend, like all um, all put together, you know? Like, I don't think Yerba Mate is bad. Um, I think I've read that it has some issues with being contaminated often in the same way that, like, matcha can, like with heavy metals and stuff. So make sure that you're getting it from, like, a good source, but also pay attention to your body. If it lasts, if it's, like, making you shit your brains out <laughs> for more than, like, a day or so, your body is saying no. But also, that's pretty, pretty pushy supplement, like like also combining it with ginseng and not knowing which type of ginseng it is like if you're working with like siberian ginseng or any of those typical ginsengs they're really like go 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 um but if it was american ginseng that's more of a cooling herb to calm you down but i uh, combined it with your mate those are just like you're really hitting that adrenal hard and forcing it to function right so but if your body isn't feeling great like listen to that right um especially if it lasts for more than a day or so of your, your your gut just getting accustomed to it right if every time you take it you go to the bathroom your body's like stop right um okay question uh question how to make bone broth properly i probably need to make a video about it but the main mistake that people make with bone broth is putting too much liquid in there I want you to fill your pot with a bunch of like gelatinous bones or whatever bones you can get to have cartilage on them, any bones, but you know, knuckle bones, tail bones, things like that are always better, um, joints or things, but <coughs> I want you to put that in your pot and I want you to just barely cover it with water. I don't want you to cover it halfway. I don't want, I want you to just barely cover it with water. You're gonna simmer it down and down and down and down. And now you can add a little bit more water through about halfway the day and decoct it down and down and down again. Really the thing about bone broth is you're just attempting to extract the, the gelatin compounds, right? That's why a proper bone broth sets up like jello and you can like turn it upside down and it won't really fall out, right? Um, so. The main thing that people do wrong is put too much liquid in it, you know, and if you do put that much liquid in it, you're going to have to simmer it down to almost nothing, right? Because you want to concentrate all of the amino acids and, you know, that are in the gelatin and things like that. Question, are there any teas I can drink that make me relax like wine? I'm trying to cut down, but I like the relaxed feeling a lot. You ever been tea drunk? <laughs> so actually... I just drank one the other day, yesterday, and you can get it from, uh, there we go. You can get it from various suppliers. You don't have to get it from this company, but it's a cultivar called Ruby Gaba. Uh, and this is an oolong tea and you're like, it has caffeine in it. I know, but it has so much, it has so much GABA acid in there that it will absolutely calm you down. There's also the capacity um, to work with L-theanine. Like you could work with a very low dose, find the lowest dose possible of L-theanine um, if you're going to take it in a supplement and be gentle about it. But I like getting my L-theanine from tea. So you can actually do this thing where they call it getting tea drunk and you can start reading descriptions to see what the feeling of this tea is because what will happen is like I'll drink a certain tea and you'll think because of the caffeine that you will be all caffeinated but really happens is I'm like <laughs> right it like passes me out like it makes me calm it makes me relax because it's the theanine and with this ruby gaba cultivar it's crazy this one says this oolong is specifically produced or processed oolong for a high GABA over 250 milligrams per 100 grams of tea and that'll that'll calm you right down but also if you don't want to work with anything that has caffeine in it um you could make a mildly strong cup of skullcap tea and that'll probably put you out but start slow with the skullcap it sounds scary she's just a mint she's not like danger skulls. <laughs> 
Um, but most people like she'll she'll put you out. You know, you could start with like um, a chamomile skull cap blend, right? Um, you could try a skull cap tincture as well, but that will definitely most people will zonk out from skull cap, right? Some people might um, have no response, like my mother somehow genetically just like can take all the skull cap and it doesn't make her sleep at all. Um, so it's just it's interesting. Okay, I think today has been a pretty good q and A. I'm trying to get to more questions than I normally do. Um, question, what about castor oil for skin issues like psoriasis? Yeah, castor oil is not bad. Make sure that it's hexane free and consider um, infusing it with herbs, right? So like if I was talking about like comfrey and like uh, working with chamomile, because chamomile is better for itching than even like over the counter like Benadryl type stuff, right? Cortisone. Um, you could infuse those herbs into your castor oil right castor oil is a little thick though so like my husband calls it the devil's oil <laughs> because whenever we used to sell it and like work with it like even if you have gloves it doesn't matter it gets on everything and you feel like smothered right but you can make that infused oil and then you could cut it by half with a, a different oil like avocado oil or olive oil to make it feel a little less sticky on your skin um let's see uh, what about coconut water for kidney issues coconut water is okay but if you have kidney issues like ckd remember that like you have to limit your potassium intake right so like if you are dealing with like kidney disease or anything like that um potassium rich anything isn't the answer so you'd want to stay away from the coconut water thank you for the super lofus dancer okay i was like i want to pronounce your name wrong but it <laughs> But it was a saying, not a name. Okay, any recommendations to help heal a torn muscle? My friend tore the muscle under her shoulder, uh, blade lifting her disabled son. I'd like to help her if I can. Um, you could do comfrey compresses topically if you could get her to do them a couple times a day. And then make sure that she's eating lots of things like gelatin, bone broth, plenty of vitamin C because you need vitamin C to basically knit muscle back together with a collagen remember like people think of collagen is like what makes us look beautiful but it's actually what holds all of her tissues together so if you don't have enough collagen in your body you are enough vitamin c in your body you can't make the collagen so i would consider comfrey compresses on top of eating lots of like gelatin rich foods um and making sure that i was eating like a ton of oranges for the vitamin c content um Question, when and what parts of skull cap? It's coming up everywhere. Do I wait for bloom time? You don't have to wait for bloom time, but you can. The tricky thing about a skull cap tincture is that um, when it comes to making a tincture, you need to bring your jar and your vodka with you. Right, because you got about 30 minutes after cutting her before a bunch of her properties start to dissipate. Now, in a tea, it's not as big of a deal because you want the tea to be a little bit weaker, right? But when it comes to making a tincture, bring it with you. But yeah, it's all above ground parts and you can do it before blooming or wait until she blooms. Um, either way is fine. Um, question years ago you did a video about capturing flower essences in a crystal bowl out in the sun please go over that again and how to use it i now have two crystal bowls and would love to do so well that video is still posted and i got so much shit for it because i'm like look we're not really capturing anything medicinal here right like flower essences can be beautiful if you believe them to be beautiful it is a very powerful placebo effect what bothers me about it and really you're just going to take your crystal bowls you're going to put water in it you're going to float your flowers on it in the sun and then you're going to put that water into bottles i would consider adding some alcohol to keep the water from going rancid because believe it or not water does go bad um you know you need to keep it stable but um, and, and that's fine and a lot of people like flower essences, but my whole thing is is like don't make a flower essence and then tell somebody that like this will cure your fucking illness, right? Because it's, it's all in our mind, but the placebo effect is beautiful, right? Like if you believe that this is going to make you feel better, you could take a Tic Tac and say this will make me feel less stressed out. This will make me feel less stressed out. And your brain believes that. Like it's a real science behind the placebo effect. I just get agitated at people when they 
like they sell them for like $45 a bottle and tell people that this will cure your PTSD. <laughs> and I believe I said so as much in my <laughs> my video by the level of hate comments I get. Um, question, can you put hot water over rosemary and use that on your skin without worrying about VOCs and can you use cold water? Yeah, so the issue with, so all plants have VOCs, right? It's just volatile organic compounds. They aren't inherently bad in themselves. The problem comes in when we highly refine it, right? When we're really, really just making it like way more condensed than you could ever naturally encounter. And they don't extract evenly. It's not like it's a mirror of the plant. So adding it back to water or diluting it is a little bit of a del delusion, right? So it, it actually takes a lot and it doesn't turn back into the plant. But as far as adding hot water over top of it, that's fine. But I wouldn't let it go for more than like 10 minutes because it doesn't take a lot. I would actually probably opt for a cold water infusion in the fridge overnight with dry rosemary. You would probably get more of the compounds that you're after to stimulate like follicle growth and stuff in your hair without over extracting the VOCs. It's actually become one of my favorite ways to brew fragrant herbs versus the like 10 minute quick sit with hot water I'm doing like an overnight brew with cold water in my fridge and the flavors come out so much more complex there's no over extraction of VOCs I feel like it's a really fantastic way to work with these herbs either internally or externally um, question is mint water good for your face you know, if you're using real mint, it probably wouldn't hurt anything. Um, all mints are going to have a little bit of antibacterial, antimicrobial cooling effects on the skin, right? She'd probably be pretty good for slowing down, like, inflammation and redness if you used her on a consistent basis. Um, but, again, I would use a real mint. Um, question. What are the best plant allies for ovarian cancer? Um... I like working with turkey tail mushroom. She's one that I have personally used to deal with cancer. I, I really like turkey tail mushroom, but you need to use a lot of her and consistently. Um, but also it just depends like what type of treatment you're undergoing and what you're doing. Um, they'll probably opt for a hysterectomy. Right, I imagine. Um, but then after that, you know, looking at how to support your body hormonally, they may or may not give you bioidentical hormones or HRT. Um, if you were going to go that route, I would, I would personally opt for bioidentical if you can get them. Um, but yeah, you know, I just like turkey tail mushroom for cancer in general. Um, okay, so let's see. Question: Anything cool I can do with my sage that's blooming? Oh, if you're probably talking about garden sage, right, which is actually in the mint family. I believe I have a video on making, um, like, garden sage bloom infused honey. I really like that. It's fantastic for sore throats. You can make an instant tea with it. You can do all kinds of stuff. I also like, um, sage is really good for drying things out. So if you're, like, over sweating, if you're, like, coughing up really dry wet, if you're over bleeding, if you're done breastfeeding and you want to dry everything out, I've used, I use garden sage to dry up, um, when I was done breastfeeding my daughter, and, um, I make enough milk for, like, five babies, so it's a big deal that it, <laughs> that it actually works, you know, but I like her, I like her infused into honey a lot, um, she's also pretty good in the vinegar, and then you can use it to cook with, too, or you can make an oxymil, where that's vinegar and honey with, the uh, garden sage, so, I think I'm going to answer like two more questions and then I'm going to hop off because it's been over 30 minutes. Um, question, um, what, what, herb, geez, what herbs are good for osteoporosis? I like bull thistle. I actually have um, a video on that. So the difference between RA, which is rheumatoid arthritis, and osteoporosis is osteoporosis is more of like a wear and tear situation happening. Um, and I really like bull thistle for that. But also make sure that you're getting a lot of vitamin K in your diet. Vitamin K is really important for helping like bone health and neurological health and fall down the rabbit hole of what vitamin K really does for our body beyond bone health. But, um, uh, I just read a study the other day because I have a, a mutation in my body that means I need a lot more vitamin K than the average person. And so I, I fall deep into the vitamin K and they talk about like the direct correlation between vitamin K deficiency and osteoporosis. 
right and so but like herb wise i also really like bull thistle and i have a video about her um she would probably be harder to buy online you'd have to find some bull thistle growing around you but the good news is she's hyper invasive <laughs> so there's not really many states um, or places in the u.s anyhow that she isn't growing abundantly um question herbal uses for apple tree blooms i you know I like to make her into a perfume as a tincture because she smells really good. The tricky thing about fruit trees is they all have glycosides in them. And glycoside, people will be like, there's cyanide. I'm like, not really. What it is, is it's a precursor to it. And you'd have to consume a shit ton of it before your liver could actually turn it into cyanide. And you'd get pretty sick before that even happens. You'd have like diarrhea and stuff. And the thing with like fruit trees, stone fruits, seed fruits, all that kind of stuff, uh, they all kind of have a heavy glycoside load. And I would suspect that the bloom is also heavy with it too, right? Um, but I haven't dug into it deeply. My brain wants to say that it would probably be used similar to like cherry bark or like almond blooms where they're working with it for like coughs and like to stop a cough. But I don't personally like to use those things a whole lot because of the like heavy glycoside load, you know? Um, but yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, I went a little longer than 30 minutes. That's okay. My brain gets going, gives up all this information. I'm really grateful that everybody is here with me. I like doing these tea times. They're a very good outlet for my brain. My brain is like, yes, we will dump all the thing. And then, but you know, limits because my body is you know, a human and my brain doesn't always acknowledge that sometimes that I have physical limitations. So thank you so much for being with here, here with me. Yeah, I gotta stop. I'm messing words up. <laughs> if you would like to support my capacity to teach freely, to do my tea times, to do my videos and just generally be a human, consider becoming a member. It's a way to throw me a couple bucks a month. You know, there's nothing hidden behind a paywall. So if you can't afford to pay, that's okay. You can also call something home from my apothecary that that directly supports my capacity to keep tea in my pot and a roof over my head. And you can use the one-time code tea time, T-E-A-T-I-M-E, -E, and you'll save 10% off of anything you call home from the apothecary. It's also super helpful if you like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on notifications. Sharing is extra helpful because it helps other people realize that they are smart enough to do this too and it gets my work out there in the world. So thank you so much for watching folks and I'll see you Monday morning during Monday morning tea time. Bye.